Hey there, it's Colin Smith from Photoshop Cafe, and today we're going to go out and fly the new DJI Phantom 3 Professional. I'm going to be using Google Glass to record some of this, and then we're also going to be recording some from the copter itself. So, without further ado, let's go out and see what this puppy can do. The DJI Phantom 3 Professional, and we're going to do a little flight and a review, but let's have a quick look at it right now. So, when we look at it, let's talk about the body here. Uh, first of all, the propellers are exactly the same props that they had on a Phantom 2, so you can reuse your old props, you're good to go. The battery is different. This is uh, looks pretty much the same, but it's a different uh, configuration. So your old batteries won't work, but it's uh, a higher uh, capacity battery than what it had in the past. So um, let's just uh, have a look at that. Let's flip this over. Now there's a couple of things you want to bear in mind when you take this out of the box, take the bit of plastic off that controls the gimbal that just kind of stabilizes it keeps it in place and also there's a piece of foam that goes in the back here make sure you pull out that piece of foam because some people had some problems with the gimbal not uh, being stable and that's because that foam was in there and it doesn't mention that in the manual you know even got to the point where people were calling it foamageddon which is you know it's not going to be the end of the world just pull, pull out the piece of foam uh, the big difference really between the uh, professional and the advanced is you can see the gold stickers on here and we've got a little bit of gold here, but really what it is is with the camera. This is a 4K camera. The Advance can only shoot at 1080 at 60 frames per second. So this one will shoot at 4K. And uh, so essentially that's what we've got there. The other thing that's changed is the legs are a little bit different, so they stay out of the frame. It sits a little bit higher. And then also we've got optical flow. If we look on the back here, there's three sensors here for audio and uh, visual sensing. And this enables it to hold its positioning if there's no satellite. All right, so that's the essentially what we've got there for the copter. Big changes though on the transmitter or the controller here. Let's have a look at this. It looks a lot more like the Inspire 1 um, as far as the controller. In fact, it's very, very similar. Big difference is the Inspire 1 is silver. This one here is white. And if you look on the bottom here, there's no HDMI out. The Inspire has that, but the Phantom 3 does not. Okay, so if we look at the other controls, let's have a look here. We've got our antennas here. Um, we've got our switches. This will take photos with the camera. This will record video. This one here will turn the gimbal up, up or down so we can actually control the gimbal with this control. This one here we can press it in or we can uh, move it to change the camera settings so that's quite useful. This button here enables us to uh, review our photos and video. If we flip it over on the back you'll see there's two switches there. Those are customizable. And then we've got the on off and return to home. So you'll see here, here's our battery meter. So what we're gonna do to turn it on is just click once and click again, hold it, and it will load up. Notice we've got a phone on here. You can use an iPad as well once the app becomes available, which it's not yet for the iOS, it's held up. Um, you wanna connect this through the cable into the USB in the back. So rather than working on Wi-Fi, it works through here. And now what we wanna do is turn on the copter. So we're gonna go here Click once and click again to turn it on. And once it turns on, you'll see the gimbal will kind of move around a little bit. And it's just kind of stabilizing itself. All right, so now we've got connection here with the camera. Uh, I'm gonna show you here, we've got the three position switch. Remember the one that was on the side? Well, actually on this side over here, this is it here right now. So if we go to this one here, this is satellite. And uh, you can see that it's showing satellites now. It's safe to fly in GPS mode. And then we can go into the middle here, which is what used to be an attitude mode, where we can fly without the uh, satellites. And uh, we can also turn on the IOC, which is, gives us advanced um, orientation, or we can just turn off the satellite altogether. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull it backs and forwards a few times, just like we used to. And that's another way to kind of set this up for uh, calibration. So you'll see what's happened right now is we've got the yellow, and I'm just going to turn it around 360 degrees. It's going to go to green, drop it nose down. We're going to go around 360 degrees. And I'll start flashing, showing that now the calibration, compass calibration is complete. And uh, now it's just going to kind of find a lock. I'm just going to pull it out a little bit. And once we see it flashing green, solid green, that means we've got a connection. And we're good to go. So if we look on the app here, we can see some different things on the app. You can see we can safe to fly. We can change the... Uh, get out of that that gives us advanced uh, settings we can go in here we can change the flight mode and some different options in here we're not going to go into those right now 
and we can see you know we've got our satellites here we've got 12 satellites 11 12 good to go batteries are good and 81% uh, on the copter we can hit in here in this corner here and this will give us some other settings so we can change some of these and the other ones that are really important is the camera settings down here we can change our camera settings we want to shoot in raw which we can set there, notice that. We can set our white balance, all this kind of different stuff, video size. Want to make sure we're shooting in 4K. Let's do uh, 24 frames per second. So we're good for that. Um, and we can switch between the camera and video just by clicking on here and sliding that. Which of course we don't really need to do that too much. Let's go back again, but it will change some of our stats because we can use the buttons on the controller. So the other thing that's kind of useful here too is um, if we tap and hold the shutter button once we've got the camera, this will give us some different modes. So we can shoot in HDR, we can do bracketing, we can do timer or just single shot. So that's some of the other settings we can do. And I'm gonna get more in depth in an, an actual tutorial in a little bit and show you um, how all these different settings work. Um, of course, let's just, uh, let's get started. So one of the things we can do is we can start it up just like we always have by pulling the levers in like that. One of the things you'll notice that I'm noticing right now is there's a different sound to the motor than before. So let's just take off. And wow, look at that. That puppy's got some speed. Um, so we can see, yeah, we've definitely got some nice speed there. And I'm just going to bring it back in a little bit. Now, um, I'm kind of flying around some trees a little bit. Let's just go up a little higher there. And let's tilt the gimbal so we can control the gimbal. We can look up, we can look down. You can kind of see the uh, display we're getting there. Now this phone is a little bit slow, but we can rotate around, let's have a look. Now one of the things I mentioned too is that normally I don't fly around so many trees, but I just really needed some shade so I could uh, record this video. So I just really wanted to do that. And let me just have a look. If you want to see the orientation, you can tap on here. And it shows us a map here with our orientation, which is kind of cool. And of course, we can just tap back here to go into our FPV. Okay, so if we want to return to home, we click and hold this for a couple of seconds. And now it's going to come into return to home. So it's going to find its satellite positioning. And here we go, it's coming over. And it's going to start coming down. It'll hover for a few seconds and it'll start to land. Uh, one of the things that's really nice about this is that notice we have full control over it while it's coming down while it's coming into to land at home look at that so i can break out of that at any time and just start flying away let me just tap that to cancel it there we go and now we have manual control again so let's spin this around Tilt the camera up a little bit. There we go. I can kind of see myself. Okay, let's stop the video recording. So you can see how responsive this is. Look at this. I'm just basically just spinning this around. Very, very responsive. Go down. Go up. Very, very responsive. All right, so let's tilt the gimbal up, gimbal up now. Let's get a little altitude. And tilt it down. I think the screen capture software is actually really slowing down the display on the phone. Okay, so there we are there. Let's have a look at the settings. And if we look at the settings here, we can see our shutter. I also shows us where we're at here. We can change that. and just tap it any time to close it. And let's take a photograph. And I'll upload some of these uh, unedited photos or at least I'll upload one of these. Let me take a picture here. So I'll upload one of the unedited pictures there for you directly to the website and also a little bit of the video. Let me just turn on the video really quickly. Now we can't record video and images at the same time. That doesn't seem to work. 
So we're just recording a little bit of video there and I'm going to stop that. So I'll give you those clips so you can have a look at them and play around with them. So let's bring it down. Now, one of the features here is we have an auto takeoff and land. So let's try this and we're just going to click on here for the automatic land and see how that goes. All right, well, that actually went quite well. So that landed itself and we can also automatic take off. So let's hit that and see what happens. So we just hit the auto takeoff and we're going to slide that across there. Notice it spins up the motors itself and it takes off. And you can determine the height that it's going to hover at by changing that in the app, of course. So let's just go up and man, that thing's got some speed. And so I'll let it automatically land. I'm just kind of guiding it in a little bit here. So it doesn't have to land exactly where you chose. Like here we go here. It's coming in a little bit. Let's see how it goes. And boom, and it'll turn itself off. All right. Cool, that was pretty neat for our first flight. Uh, one of the other things that people always ask me about is bags. I get a lot of uh, discussion about bags and cases. So I have two essentially ones that I'm using right now. This one here, I really like that. This is, this is the Think Tank, and this is the uh, airport um, helipack. So it's actually a backpack, and it's super light, got lots of space, and I can put my copter in here, no problem. Um, so that's great for when I'm going hiking or I'm taking it different places. Only disadvantage is I have to take the props off, which is not really a big deal. And then the other case I have is the Go Professional hard case. This is one I use a lot when I'm at home because I can pop this in here and actually keep the props on and everything intact. Um, this is an older one um, where I've just kind of chopped it up a little bit, but I've made it work. So the one I was using on the Phantom 2 will work on the Phantom 3, as you can see there, with a little, uh, little chopping. They've got a new one uh, coming out or come out. And uh, so that's that case. So when I'm, you know, kind of just driving around, I usually keep it in here. When I go on a trip or I'm going to go hiking, I want to take it with me. I'll pop it in a helipack here and then I'll take it. And uh, so depending on your purposes, both of those bags work really well. I'll also give you um, links to those on the website. So check out Photoshop Cafe where I'm going to have more resources for you. I'm going to post this up there. I'm going to have links where you can download the photos. You can download the videos and I'm going to have some additional information. I'm also going to be working at some point on a, um, on a full training on this. So check out the training we've got right now, photoshopcafe.com forward slash drone. And also some of the training I'm going to have coming out soon.